This is our newest Ferrari flip car. Why? Craig, you already own this car. How is that even possible? We sold the Bentley. And just like that, she's no longer ours. See you later, Bentley. It's been fun. At least we have two other toys to enjoy. Bentley is sold. We have a surplus of cash. I took all that money and bought the Aston Martin from Flying Wheel. So this is officially our newest Ferrari flip car, which is really cool. We get to move this series along. The coolest part is to say this out loud. We have an Aston Martin now for $400. This is a $400 Aston Martin that is super cool. Even better, stay tuned because later in this video, I'm gonna be doing another giveaway. So you guys are gonna get some more free stuff. So make sure to stay tuned to later. I'm gonna tell you how you get some more free stuff. I was puttering around a dealer only auction when I stumbled across this Aston Martin DB9. Did you just buy that Aston Martin? I did. What a beautiful car. That car was awesome. So happy to hear that. Guess what? I got the Aston Martin. I paid 40 grand for it. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. And I don't know if this car even runs. In today's video, we're going to do a walkthrough. I know nothing about this car. I bought it at an auction, which is pretty scary. I will tell you, the coolest thing about buying an Aston Martin is it automatically comes with a tuxedo and a glass for your martinis. It's Craig, Craig from Flying Wheels. And welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I would do an English accent as long as I could, although quite possibly the worst English accent in the entire history of English accents. So I'm not gonna bother you with those. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels and this is a 2007 Aston Martin DB9 with a six liter V12. It is an incredible machine. The only thing is we bought it at a dealer auction and when you buy things at a dealer auction, you don't know what the heck you're getting. I've never owned an Aston Martin before. I don't know what to look for. I don't know what we're doing with this car. I've never even been in one until we purchased this one. Now in today's video, we're gonna do a full walk around, find out if I got burned at the auction or if this car is an absolute auction score. We're gonna list it up for sale and we're gonna figure out what it's worth. I might've paid too much for this car. I have no idea because there's not many Aston Martin DB9s for sale that I can use as comps to even figure out if I paid too much. Now I paid $40,000 for this car and I'm hoping it's worth 50. At the end of this video, if it's all good and hopefully it is, we're gonna try to list it for 50,000 and see if we can make a $10,000 profit on this car. The best thing is I've never used cars and bids before. So Doug DeMuro's YouTube website, cars and bids, we're gonna try to list this thing on there and see if we can make a profit. I don't know, we might even take a loss on it, but we're gonna try to list it up and gamble a little bit. Let's get going. about this car isn't the Tesla door handle, it's that the doors actually open up and not out. And they stay hydraulically. Now I'm told there are multiple reasons why this door opens upwards and not outwards. It's to actually resemble the Aston Martin logo with the wings on the sides. So those doors would actually be the wings on the logo. Fun fact, that might be completely made up, but it does make sense. I wanna talk about gentlemanly. This car has a spot for your umbrella. See these circles right here? This and that is your umbrella holder. Unfortunately, the previous owner selfishly kept it for themselves, which is not classy. I feel like even though it is obvious, I need to say this, this is not a martini, it was just a glass of water. But I'm gonna show you my second favorite part of this car. Now if I turn the key on, Hit the engine start button right here. I want to talk about class. Everything is made out of solid wood or stainless steel, including the gauge bezels. Now, while we're on the topic of classy, let me show you this. 2007, this car has Bluetooth, which I'm surprised. Bluetooth wasn't really a thing back in 2007. However, when I push this button, 
Main menu. You can say dial number, call followed by name, redial, setup menu, contact list, phone voice name, or speak. She has an English accent. End. Goodbye. So we're gonna take this back to my shop. We're gonna go through it. We're gonna check out the entire car. So every car we get, we have a 72 point inspection. It's a New Hampshire state inspection that is quite honestly very rigorous. So we're very thorough with all our cars, not just because it's an Aston Martin, it's, it's everything because we want to know what we're selling. So we check things like lights and instruments and glass and tint and body and chassis and steering, tires and wheels, front and rear brakes, front suspension, rear suspension, emissions, exhaust, I mean, you name it, we go through it because we have to for state inspection reasons. Now, quite honestly, I don't know this car. I don't know much about Aston Martins. And I think just like the Bentley, if it's really expensive to work on, it's because of the parts and the knowledge. My Bentley, what I'm learning is it's really difficult to work on because you need to know the car. Not because it's necessarily difficult to work on. There's just some weird, quirky things about that car that I'm assuming are the same with this car. Now looking at it, everything's pretty standard and what I've found out is a lot of it is Ford parts. Now I'm sure someone out there knows, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this has a six liter V12, which I'm told is two three liter Ford Duratec V6s. And a lot of these parts are actually interchangeable with Ford part numbers. So before you go out and buy your Aston Martin parts, reference it with your Ford dealer to see if you can get them from them on the real cheap versus buying Aston Martin parts, which are really, really expensive. Now, what did we come up with? Tires, all Michelin Pilot Sports, they all match. Staggered sizes on 19 inch wheels, 630 seconds all around, so they all have the exact tread depth, which is great. No curbing on the outside, so the wheel alignments are perfect. Brakes, great front pads and rotors, 630 seconds. Rear pads are at 330 seconds, which is marginal, so they're on the path of needing replacement. Fluids, belts, suspension, ball joints, tie rods, exhaust, everything is impeccable. We found the factory catalytic converters with straight pipes out to the rear, and that's why the car sounds so good. So, so far, auction gamble on an Aston Martin, which is just beetle-headed. If you guys know what movie that is, please comment. My mind will be blown. It's just beetle-headed to even go out and spend $40,000 on an Aston Martin that you don't know anything about. It doesn't even make sense. But it has a clean Carfax. It shows no accidents. It has a list of service records on the Carfax. So I would say it's more of a calculated risk over a gamble. But now that we have a clean bill of health, you know what that means. We actually get to drive this thing. So for the next few days, I get to own this thing myself, take it out for rides, and you guys get to come with me. So let's go. All right, welcome to Can You Daily Drive and Aston Martin with the kids. We're going to a kid's birthday party today, and the kids have to fit back here. So let's see if we can do it. I don't know if these seats are for show or if they're really functional. We're gonna find out right now. Go ahead, try to get in. You might be able to do it. Oh, that looks... <laughs> You're not eating those in my car. Logan thought he'd be eating Cheetos in our car, which is against the rules. One? Absolutely not. A crumb? Not even a crumb, which is why you can't have them, because you get crumbs everywhere. The car's too loud, I can't hear the music. It is pretty loud. I normally have an annoying child behind me that loves to kick the back of my seat, which is very frustrating. So I've been noticing it happening more frequently in this car than any other car. Because he's so close to the back of my seat already. This makes me smile every time. I found the first problem. These cup holders don't fit a damn thing. What the heck kind of cup is supposed to go there besides a Red Bull? I don't know what else they were expecting to put there. So now I have to leave my cups here to kind of fall over and make a mess and hope that they're sealed appropriately or I tuck it in right down here. So, cup holders? No. I don't even know why they put that there. Another thing I'm noticing, power seats are here, heated seats are down here, which is kind of neat. I don't know what these two buttons do. The, I, I guess I'm kind of spoiled from my Audi and other cars, even my Denali. Heated steering wheel. 
I'm in New Hampshire and it is freaking cold this morning. It's 30 degrees this morning. It'll be 50 something this afternoon, but 30 degrees is cold. I like a heated steering wheel. With the steering wheel in mind, I don't know if you can see this little indent right here. This little dimple is kind of neat. So it tells me exactly where 12 o'clock is. So I guess if you're racing, sliding your hands all the way across the steering wheel, but keeping focus on the track, you can always find your 12 o'clock position on your steering wheel, which is kind of neat. Day two, can you daily drive a V12 Aston Martin. 5 a.m. gym time. Time to wake the neighbors, I guess. I'm sure they're not pleased about that. I am idling out of my street, and it is just so loud. There's no way that every single neighbor didn't hear me this morning. I gotta take a minute. I, I don't really know what to say besides, like, how fortunate I have... A Bentley and an Aston Martin here. I mean, these are things like you could only dream of, things I would have only dreamt of as a kid. And I have them both in front of me. That is just so neat. I'm like so privileged to be able to do these things. Wow, I just got chills. And it's thanks to you guys. So thanks for watching my stuff because I enjoy buying these things and I enjoy making the videos. So you guys get to watch this stuff. Let's go take this thing for a rip and learn about it. Safety first. Right, hang on to your horses. The other thing I notice is, yes, we have our drive. There's no button to turn it into Tiptronic or whatever you want to call it, manual mode so they use the paddle shifters. The way you do it, I just learned, is just you shift it manually and it engages the paddle shifting or the manual shifting on this car. I don't know how this thing handles performance wise, like with grip and traction. I know my Corvette would just go because I know that car. I don't know if this car is going to spin out sideways. Oh my goodness. If you look right here, the speedometer looks like we're not even going fast because the speedometer goes to 220 miles an hour. I knew this car had a top speed of over 200 miles an hour and from reading forums about it, it actually outperforms Ferraris in a lot of ways and there are aficionados for Aston Martins that would much prefer this car over a Ferrari. And it's not so much your zero to 60, it is your top speed at a smooth pace. So it will go 200 miles an hour smoothly. We accelerated quickly, but we did not go over the speed limit. This car is gonna get me in trouble. I don't want to speed, but it is smooth at 60 miles an hour. Like you don't feel like you're going 60 miles an hour when you are. Hang on, tight turn coming up. Yeah, so it does have traction control that engages around turns because I was expecting it to kick out a little bit and it didn't. Yeah, see it won't let the wheels spin. sticker because it passed emissions and safety but number two in order to pass emissions you have to plug it into the computer which is the OBD computer and plug it into the OBD port and I want to show you there's actually one and two OBD ports which is really strange I don't know why one is for UK and one is for US I have no clue one of my favorite things about this car is it's completely wrapped in a paint protection film so I don't have to worry about scratching the paint. Typically you want to hand wash a car, which you still should, but I just need a quick wash so we can take some photographs and the paint protection film is going to protect the whole car from my scrub brush. Notice that how the water is beating up. That's not a wax coating, that's nothing. It's from the paint protection film that causes the water to beat up like this. I'm told it's like an $8,000 option to PPF your car, to put a paint protection film on your car.
you've been following along, you know we love to give stuff away. When people have us try the products, we try them. If we like them, we give them to you. All right, results are in. Armor Shield, Avalon King, Nano Ceramic Coating. We ceramic coated the Bentley. Came out great. The product was awesome. I love it. $69.99 retail. One of you guys are going to win this product right now. Now remember, there are three ways to enter. Number one, you had to like the video, you had to subscribe, and then you had to comment Avalon King Armor Shield. So at random completely, we're gonna pick somebody right now. Bailey, I'm not looking, you just tell me when. When? 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 When. All right. William Smith, Armor Shield. Thanks, Craig. All right, William Smith, congrats. All right, congrats, William Smith. Giveaway time. I'm gonna try to give away stuff as much as possible just to say thank you for you guys for always watching my stuff and being supportive. Today, I'm giving away a flying wheels hat, a free hat. I'll send it to you. How do you get this? All you have to do is comment down below flying wheels. Now we have shirts, we have hoodies, we have hats, all kinds of stuff in the description down below in our merch store. So if you ever wanna support our channel, you can go to the merch store, buy yourself some hats, shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, whatever you want. Check it out in the link down below. Photograph day. Today we're taking photos of the Aston Martin so we can put up on cars and bids and all types of other websites. Bailey, you see behind me, is my media manager. He does all my photographing, my videoing, my editing. He does like the production in the back end stuff that you don't really get to see. So he's taking all the detailed photos of the car. I don't need 40 plus photos. I try to stick with like 20 to 24 photos. Nothing is like elaborately detailed, but when you do things like cars and bids and eBay and bring a trailer, you really want to show the details. People need to know all the details. There are a lot of rocket scientists that want to know exactly what they're buying, especially because they're buying it sight unseen. So you don't want any surprises when the car arrives because you will absolutely be getting a call and say, hey, you didn't tell me about this scratch or this nick or whatever it is. So we're taking probably 75 to 80 photographs of this car and I did a full walk around video of the whole car pointing out any imperfections that I could find while I go through it. That way people not only get 80 photos but they're gonna see a walk around video so they get first hand view of what the car actually looks like. Well my fake martini is gone. I have absolutely enjoyed this Aston Martin, but just like all good things, they must come to an end. It is time to sell this Aston Martin and see how much money we can make. I'm gonna list it up on Cars and Bids, so if any of you are interested, hop on Cars and Bids and place your bids. Next video, we're gonna see how much this thing sold for so we can keep the Ferrari flip moving. If you loved this video, if it was all entertaining or interesting, do me a favor by giving me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe. See you all later. Have a lovely evening.